Hi, I'm Alistair, and this is an escape room puzzle about a set of paintings hung on a wall. Now, this could be in an art gallery or museum, or just in an opulent living room or study. But these paintings hold a secret, and that is that they are all ambigrams. They're optical illusions that appear differently depending on how you look at them. And to solve the puzzle, players must rotate the paintings to make them depict the correct subjects. So here I've got a watercolour painting of a hillside villa in the mountains. But if I turn the painting through 90 degrees like this, it becomes a tall sailing ship on the ocean instead. Here I've got a red farmyard barn, but turned on its side it becomes a portrait of a military general. Down here I've got a steam train in the countryside, but if I flip that all the way through 180 degrees, it becomes a photo of a caterpillar on a leaf instead. And then finally I've got a pencil sketch of a girl, but when I rotate that, it becomes an image of a horse. Now when I solve this final one, the puzzle is completed and this maglock releases, enabling players to proceed through the room. And in the rest of this video, I'm going to explain how I built this and how you can make this puzzle yourself. Now, I made these images using a Python script on my computer, and I've made a whole separate video explaining that in more detail if you'd like to do the same. But there's really no reason that this puzzle requires these images to depict complex ambigrams. This painting could be any subject really, even something as simple as a letter or a number or just an arrow. Something that enables players to know which orientation the painting has been set to. And then to enable the frames to rotate smoothly, they've been mounted onto Lazy Susan mechanisms such as this one. And these are very cheap and easy to get from Amazon or any other similar online supplier or just from a hardware shop. Now, on the reverse of the frames, on the centre of one side edge, there is a small magnet. And then in the board behind each of the paintings, there is a magnetic sensor. So as the frame is rotated, the magnet comes in front of the sensor and when it does so that means that I know that the painting has been set to the correct orientation. When all four paintings have been set to the correct location that enables the maglock to be released. And now if I take one of these paintings off you'll be able to see the mechanism behind. So here I've got my Lazy Susan bearing and that's mounted onto the backboard. Now I've always found these a little bit fiddly to install if I'm honest. What you need to do is first of all screw the back plate onto the base through these four screw holes here. And then you also need to drill a pilot hole just off to the side because what you're then going to do is screw from the back through these holes in the front plate into the back of the frame at the front here. That's the way I've always been uh, taught to install these, although I'll be honest, I do find it a little bit awkward. So if you know a better way to install lazy season mechanisms, please do uh, let me know in the comments below because I'd appreciate it. Um, you'll see I've also got the neodymium magnet mounted on the back of the frame here. And this is positioned so that when the painting is in the correct rotation, that's going to line up with the magnet sensor here. This is an RC35 magnet sensor. These are commonly sold as a window or door locks as part of a home security system. Uh, they've got two wires and they're very easy to install. You simply drill a seven millimeter hole here and then just push them through. So this is the reverse of the board, never mind the prominent image of the duck. And we've got the one, two, three, four magnet sensors that have been pushed through from the front side. They are wired to the screw shield which is attached to an Arduino Uno here. Now there's nothing particularly special about an Arduino Uno, you could use pretty much any microcontroller for this project so long as it's capable of reading four digital inputs and controlling one digital output. So the magnet sensors themselves are all wired to a unique GPIO pin each and also through to a common shared ground. 
And then the five volt relay module up here, well, that's wired to a GPIO pin as well. And when the Arduino writes a high or a low value to that GPIO pin, that's gonna cause the relay to control a 12 volt DC power source, which is going to energize or release the maglock on the front. And here's just an illustration of that same wiring. So I've got my magnetic sensors going to my input pins here, and then the signal outline going to control the relay module here, which switches a 12 volt DC power source between the common and normally closed inputs to control this maglock. And here's the code that's running on the Arduino. Now this is a nice short sketch, it's under 50 lines of code, it's very straightforward and arguably you could say you actually don't need a microcontroller for this puzzle at all. You could create exactly the same functionality just using discrete components and relays. But the reason why I like to use a microcontroller in all of my puzzles is because it enables them to be much more extendable to add extra functionality or features in the future. So if you wanted to add a sound effect, if you wanted to be able to monitor the state of the puzzle remotely or to override it through a room control system, this gives you the framework that you'd be able to drop that extra functionality into very easily. So I think it's a good habit to get into. And it's really not that complex. So we'll just step through it. We start at the beginning with some constants. So these define the way that the hardware has been set up. And these are the pins that are used to go to each of the magnetic sensors. And this is the pin that is going to be written to control the relay module. Then we have two arrays of global values. We've got the current state of each sensor, which will initialize to be high. And we also have the previous state of each sensor. Now, if you followed many of my escape room projects in the past, you'll know this is a very common pattern that I use. We read the current value that is going to be a digital input. So that's either high or low. And in the case of many inputs, we're going to make use of the pull-up resistors on the Arduino board itself. So their default state is going to be high, which is what I've put in this case here. And then when the magnetic sensor is activated, what it's going to do is it's going to close a connection through to ground, because that's how we wired them. That's going to pull this signal low. And when the current state differs from the last known state, that's how we know that one of the paintings has just been either turned into the correct position or it was at the correct position and it's been turned away from it. So this is a very, very common pattern that you'll have seen me use lots of times before. So hopefully that's fairly familiar. Then we go into the setup function. So this is the program that runs at the start when the Arduino board first powers up and it just does some initialization. We'll start a serial connection at 115 200 board rate and then we'll also just print out the name of this sketch and the date when it was last compiled. We're not actually going to make use of the serial monitor to solve the puzzle at all but it's just again a useful thing that i like to put in there it enables the code to be much easier to debug in the future or if you do want to have any kind of serial communication to the controller it means that you've already got it set up and running in the background then we initialize first the input pins and as i mentioned we're going to be setting them to be input pull up so their default value is going to read high and then we'll also initialize the output pin that goes to the relay module. And once again, the default value of that is going to be high. This can appear confusing sometimes. You sort of think as uh, an output of being low when it is off and high when it's on, but that's not really what high and low values mean in Arduino speak. High and low values are simply two states that a digital input can have. There's nothing intrinsic that means high is on and low is off. And in most relay modules, it's actually the other way around. They're active low. So high means that the relay is in its default state. And when we switch this to low, that's what's going to trigger the relay to uh, switch across and de-energize the maglock. Then we go on to the loop function. So the loop function just runs over and over again. And what we do on each iteration of the loop is we're going to set a flag to see have any of the values of the sensors changed since last time we checked them. 
and we'll assume the default case for this is false. So our initial position will be saying, no, nothing's changed since last frame. And then we'll loop over each of them in turn and see whether that's actually true or not. So four is the number of sensors we've got, but you can extend that to however many you want. You simply need to add more elements to the arrays at the beginning here and to define which extra pins you're using as well. But we'll loop over four here and we will take a digital reading of the corresponding sensor pin and we'll store that in the sensor states array that we defined at the top. And then we'll compare the value that's now in the sensor states array for this sensor to the previous value that we read from this sensor in the array. Now, if this is the first time through the loop, remember that these were both initialized as high. So the only reason this is not going to be true is if at some point we've been able to take a digital reading that reads low. That means that the magnet has come in front of the magnetic sensor it's closed that connection and it's gone through to ground, which now reads a low value. And if that's the case, we know that at least one of the sensors has changed. And we'll update the last known value for this sensor so that next time we loop through, we know what, what it was uh, previously reading as. So we loop over all of the sensors. And if any one of them is different from its last known value, we've set a flag called has changed is true. And if that is true, then this block of code now gets executed. So if any of them have changed value, what we're going to do is we're going to print out to the serial connection, which we initialized before, and we're going to loop over all of them and simply print out, are they currently correct or incorrect? And that's going to correspond to whether that sensor is reading a low value or not. So this will doesn't have any effect on the actual functionality of the controller. It's simply to enable us to browse at a glance to see uh, how the paintings have been configured, which ones are correct and not. And for example, if you were running this as a games master in a room and players were stuck on this puzzle and it wasn't seeming to be activated, this is going to be the kind of information that you're going to want to know to say, Paintings one, two, and four are correct, but three is incorrect. And this is where the real benefits of being able to use a microprocessor that has this kind of level of granularity, rather than just looping all of the sensors together into a simple series circuit, for example. You get that extra level of detail. But this is only used for debugging, or like I say, for feedback to a uh, management system or something like that. This is the section of code that's actually going to release the maglock. And what does this do? Well, we've got a fairly long if condition here, but it's actually very straightforward. And I've deliberately enumerated this in full this time, just to say, if the sensor states value for the first element, so if the first sensor is reading low, and when you read this double ampersand like this, this is a logical condition to mean and, so this statement has to be true, and also this statement has to be true, which is that the next sensor is reading low. And also this statement is true. And also this statement is true. So you can see this is a little bit verbose. It's a little bit lengthy, but it makes it very explicit what we're doing here. We are going over all of the sensor values. We're checking that they are all equal to low. And if that's the case, we're going to write a low value to the output pin. That was what was connected to the relay. And the relay is then going to switch from the normally closed to the normally open position, and that is going to release the maglock. If any of these conditions are not true, however, that means that this entire statement is false. And if the statement is false, we're going to write a high signal to the output pin instead. Now, because there is no permanent state to this puzzle. We are checking this on every single iteration of the loop. When you want to reset this puzzle for the next team of players to come through, it's incredibly simple. You just have to change any of the paintings so that they are no longer in the solved state. And if that's the case, then the maglock will simply re-energize and lock again. So that brings me to the end of this video about my rotating painting optical illusion art gallery picture portrait puzzle. I hope you found it useful and informative and hopefully it gave you some ideas for a new puzzle that you can incorporate in your own escape rooms. 
Now, as always, I will be uploading the Arduino code I demonstrated along with the wiring diagram over to my Patreon account, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. So if you'd like to access the resources that go along with this or any of the other escape room projects which I've demonstrated in this channel, please do head over there and check it out. And I want to take this opportunity to say thank you so much to all my Patreon supporters who enable me to create these tutorials each month. I really do appreciate your ongoing support, so thank you. And other than that, I just want to say if you've got any comments or suggestions or questions, please do let me know and I'll do my best to get back to you. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, cheers. Bye.